Hey folks, welcome. Bookshelf mounting a grid of Linux boxes. That's the thumbnail for this uh, update. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm trying to reach out to new folks and to do that to be more accessible by being as specific as I can about what the content <laughs> is in each particular video. So that's what this one's mostly going to be about. I mean, you know, the T2 Tile project is about reinventing computing and it has, you know, consequences from hardware to software to artificial life to humans and society, but that's a little bit of a longer story. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to stick to this. Uh, we're going to have a a video, you know, uh, I'm mostly a software person, not a, a electrical engineer, not a mechanical engineer, not a furniture designer, interior decorator, or any of these things. I'm a total amateur at all of that, so be prepared. Uh, so we're going to start by watching a little 90 second demo of the kind of things that we could do with this grid of Linux boxes, uh, um, and then we'll circle back around to introduce the main video. Uh, and as always, we'll start with the computing team creed. First be robust, then as correct as possible, and as efficient as necessary. Okay, this is the demo of Eugene Time Lapse. was Eugene. It's the standard laws of physics that come with the tiles at the moment. That weird shape was the two lotuses, 38 T2 tiles, each one running Linux. Uh, and it's the same that you can see uh, in this uh, thumbnail for the video. So uh, again, let me <laughs> just warn you, uh, uh, <laughs> this, the, what, what you're going to see here maybe isn't pretty, you know, trigger warnings for incompetence. But, you know, I do software, I do this other stuff because that's what it seems to be necessary to advance the, 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 the T2 tile project, which is about actually building uh, a real thing, not, not just in simulation, but to explore the issues from physics to philosophy. So let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the video. So we're gonna have to raise this whole thing up. Basically from here, to the wall is six feet, and that would be enough if we could continue <clears throat> the support pipe as long as we could go up some extensions that would screw into the bookshelf. One small one and one big one. Oh, great. What do you say, huh? Do.
32 by 25. Maybe we will cut this piece away. Seven and three eighths, twenty four and a half. And exactly how we're going to cut that, I don't know. Three, four, four. Now we got to figure out how to make this diagonal cut. I think we should use the Makita instead of the... Been a while. It's just a hair over the bench, so there's no way that's it. Uh, I'm doing a little off angle, but we are through the bottom. Pretty bad here. Wow. So that was nowhere near. And for a penny. <laughs> that was exceptionally terrible. Oh man. So now I want to fire up the jointer. <laughs> <laughs> even this out all right well I cleaned it up a little bit on the jointer but my unbelievably lame excuse for not showing you me cleaning it up on the jointer was I'm actually short on electrical outlets and I've got the Fuji on the battery replacement thing because that's its main lot in life at least I thought far enough ahead to make these non-critical. <laughs> these are the non-critical measurements. Crank down to 1100 RPM, assuming this plywood counts as soft wood. And that is not deep enough. Damn it. made a super mess of it. Now we've got a piece of wood. Clean on the back. Clean enough on the front. Okay, that's bad. So we got the two shelves, the two risers I'm calling them more or less lined up by the thing that's going to be against the wall. And the most important thing is that the holes line up and they are not even close. So I have no idea how I did that, but I am skilled in the art of screwing up measurements. Said he with a sigh, I'm a very bad whittler. I whittled the ship till it's small as a boat. Now I whittled a hole in it, how will it float? So he threw it away and cut his throat. But when he saw his head was gone, he whittled another and put that on. And there's John Shardy. Jeez. So, uh, just for the record, <laughs> there's the jointer. It's gonna go a little bit deep. I think that seems fine for... Not too bad, considering the standards of this operation. So we messed up. Uh, we always mess up. <laughs> um, 
but I don't think it's fatal, at least not yet. This one is going to be the right extra crappy looking stuff. It's going to be against the wall. On the left side, we're going to open up both of these holes so that we can uh, lift the, the pipe out. Closer. This is the operating position for the rod as close to the bookcase. So the, the shelves will support uh, when we push on it. This is the maintenance position when we want to get in behind. All right, but why don't we just buzz off. pieces a big wrench and a lock jaw. It's holed in on both ends with not enough clearance. Aggravating. So I'm gonna have to cut this in place. You think I gotta be able to just wail on it hard enough? I'm gonna take a go at it with the with the saber saw, and I'm gonna unplug the camera. <laughs> that worked, although it was quite a bit slower going than I thought with this blade, but it did get through. What a mess. That was incredibly terrible. That's like a super ton better. <laughs> screws in to here and to there and then complete this mission by raising the bar. Yeah. said raising the bar was going to be easy. Well, it, it doesn't seem strong. I should clamp. future. The next step theoretically is bringing back 
the grid. <laughs> Boy, can you cannot even see that. All right, we're gonna have to move the camera back or put on the shorter lens, fixed focal length, so we'd have to get lucky. of what it looks like you know from further back where you see the 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 fuji uh xt4 there as well you know there's a ton of problems with this uh, uh it doesn't actually lay that well against the bookshelves part of that i think is due to the bookshelves themselves uh not exactly being lined up with each other These things could be tweaked in various ways in addition you know gonna have to pull uh, at least a few more shelves uh worth of books out to clear, uh, uh, get some clearance behind there. So part of the idea of this is that, you know, we can get, uh, get like, you know, some big slow fans that we would stick on the edges of the bookcases behind it to suck air out. So it would pull air in through the face of the grid and then send it out the sides. And that might be a cooling solution, uh, which I am increasingly concerned about. <laughs> As I, I see uh, what 38 uh, uh, Linux boxes actually feels like, uh, kind of toasty. So, step by step, uh, that is the, the development process that we have for this update. Uh, uh, last time it was, you know, here's where we were at. We're still at the same number of tiles. All the stuff is still the same, except the next step was rethink locations. I mean, it was looking like maybe we were going to need to go to a whole, you know, rent an office space or something like that. But now we raised the bar. I think the camera will be able to get a half decent shot on it. That's good. Coming forward, I still want to actually build Lotus 3, and I have some kind of confidence that it might actually be able to stay there and not have the whole thing get disassembled again. All right, that's the development story. So very quickly, uh, the 2022 project goal for T2, the T2 tile project is to redo the event engine in a much more robust fashion. And part of that idea was to redo the mechanism whereby adjacent tiles compete to see who can have the next event. And to, instead of uh, doing a long complicated protocol with packets being sent back and forth and resolving races between them, uh, that maybe we could use this ring oscillator idea that we've talked about in the last couple of, uh, of updates. Now, I wanna show something really quick here uh, well, okay, this is the time. This is what it's about. This is two weeks. So um, let's uh, take a look at it and see. I mean, there, there's not much to see It's because it's all still very low-level stuff, but you'll see. Uh, uh, okay, so here we've got uh, three tiles that are, uh, are running. Uh, we've seen this sort of thing before, but in this particular case, these tiles are not actually connected at the moment. Uh, we have a, this one has a, a power line, a power injector of his own. These two over here are sharing a power injector, even though, in fact, you know, this whole thing is really just coming from a uh, from a Y splitter over here. But the point is that allows these things to be connected or unconnected. Uh, um, and so now let's uh, let's connect a couple of these guys. We'll connect the northwest of the. This is the Keymaster, the white one. Uh, let's hook it up to its northwest. Uh, 
like that. Okay, and we start seeing update GDRO NE21, NE20, NE21. Uh, uh, what that is, is they, uh, the Keymaster and its northwest, uh, northeast, which is the southwest to the back, um, have started to do a ring oscillator between them. And so they're passing a zero around, and then when it gets back, it's getting flipped to a one, so that's going around, and so forth. Now, it's going incredibly slow because all of this stuff is slowed down for debugging purposes. Uh, uh, the important point uh, for me is that it's it's very robust. You know, so if we pull the thing out, you know, uh, all right, there we go. So now we pulled it out. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of other messages that come and go through there as well, because still the higher, the old event engine is still running at the moment as I'm working on this stuff. Uh, uh, but the, the GDRO ones are the ones that were yeah, things uh, uh, overheating. It does a lot of that with all the lights on. But let's plug it in again and see it pick right back up. Um, uh, uh, all right. And boom, right there. Uh, it's it's right back to passing the shared clock around. But now the cool thing is, the, the thing that really is new for me, is let's hook up another one. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, so now we get East, uh, um, but East 2 and East 3, if you see that. Uh, um, so what's going on is, each of these pairwise tile pairs is has a shared ring oscillator going just between them. That's why it's two, because there's two tiles involved. But now, in addition, there is a three-way shared clock going around this whole corner, going, you know, from, from the, two, the, the key master to the guy to his northeast, to the guy to his southeast, to the guy who, who's his west and back around. And that's the east three uh, um, one that's also happening simultaneously. And, and again, the, you know, these are all very robust. We can pull them out. We can plug them back in. It's happening at a lower level than the whole packet exchange that the stuff is built on. And and so, all right, so that, that's that's really mostly what I wanted to see. Uh, uh, you know, we could start up a start up a Eugene here as well, because why not? <laughs> uh, but it's not our point for the moment. Uh, um, all right, so there's the demo. And, you know, don't forget about it, this. This, this is the circuit, uh, the schematic diagram for the circuit board that is on the back of each T2 tile that, that ties the whole thing together. But what I want to call your attention to is this is one of the intertile connectors, the ITCs. And, you know, there are uh, 16 pins, you know, so VDD, that's power. There's three power, GND, that's ground. There's three grounds. That's six pins. We've got a bunch more. And, uh, you know, so what are they? Well, the... Uh, the R, the RX and TX, RX and TX ready, those four pins are the things that are actually sending the packet signals back and forth that the whole thing is built on. But there's also these uh, lock pins that uh, if you dig way back in the T2 tile project archives, you can find discussions of what these were being used for, but I never really got it to work. And I never really got it to work reliably. And I never really got it to work in a way that would play along with the packet transfers, which have all of these delays due to buffering. So I have repurposed these pins to do the generalized distributed ring oscillator. So the, the Iger lock and the IREC lock, you know, they are actually doing the uh, uh, four-stroke cycling, well, in four-stroke in the case of going across the pair, and then four-stroke all the way around the ring uh, using the other ones like that. So there's a chance. And again, I don't know that any of this is really going to end up working out in the end, uh, but it is in the spirit of you know, be, you know, UDP-ish. Don't assume that there's perfect transit uh, down below, but you have, build up a ring. Now, one of the problems with ring oscillators, in fact, is that it doesn't guarantee that there's only one edge between a one and a zero going around. If you have a ring oscillator with lots and lots of stages, you could have an island of one that's so cycling around with an island of zeros behind it, and another island of one, and another island of zeros, and they would just keep going around and around as two separate things. And if you were counting on the edges between zero and one and one and zero as being a mark of uniqueness, something in the grid, that wouldn't be true. And so that's a, that's a real problem in a distributed systems in general. We're going to avoid that. We're going to mitigate it anyway, because in each step, we're deliberately randomizing the slightly randomizing the amount of delay time through the stage, how long you get to hold the, the, the token when it's your turn. 
And in that case, I think you could do some theory, probably pretty easy, uh, to show that the islands will collapse into each other rather quickly. And once we've gotten to a single, uh, single ring, a single island of one, all ones to all zeros to all ones, it'll stay that way unless there's further, you know, errors and disruption in the system, in which case, you know, that's what self-stabilizing systems is for. So that's the current status of that. I just wanted to, uh, you know, get it marked down. Okay. And finally, you know, outreach. Uh, so in the last episode, <laughs> Uh, B.J. Manon uh, submitted the science fiction story to Asimov's uh, science fiction magazine. It's under review. You know, my my feeling at this point, you know, we're, we're waiting at least probably another three weeks and maybe even a couple of months beyond that. Uh, you know, my feeling is most likely uh, they're going to pass. And the reason that they're probably going to pass is it's not accessible enough. You know, this is like you know, back to the uh, thumbnails and making everything more accessible. It's a problem I have. Uh, uh, so we'll see. I mean, the story, uh, from the first few readers that I got feedback from the story has gotten tons more accessible, a lot easier to understand what's going on, but still it's packed pretty dense with computer stuff and all kinds of crazy things. So I'm thinking eh, they'll probably pass. We'll find out. All right. And uh, the Living Computation Foundation, for folks that don't know, uh, they uh, is backing the entire T2 project, the T2 Tile project, and uh, a, a bunch of other stuff that's in the broader mission of Living Computation. So uh, the second half, uh, 2021 second half summary is is now out. Uh, uh, you know, there it is under the the news item, and you know. I get depressed. I get down sometimes that I feel like I'm not making progress enough, progress fast enough, you know, but you know, you look at it over six months, you know, it's like a ton of stuff that you actually got done, you know, so that's good. Um, and we've got some new living computation foundation nerds. If you don't know for, for a $5 donation, <laughs> to the foundation, which is a, a nonprofit, uh, uh, you can get your own Living Computation Foundation nerd number. Uh, um, and so we we have we have a bunch of them, including a, a, a core of, you know, folks who are actually recurring donors, which I didn't expect at all. And it's like, I don't thank you guys enough. And well, I don't thank y'all enough. And so thank you. Uh, uh, it really, it, it makes a huge difference. And we've got a couple of new ones. Uh, uh, one that I've owed a thank you mail for a while and another one more recently. And the, the most recent recent one it was actually a pretty substantial contribution, like three digits, uh, uh, specifically calling out Computing Up, the Computing Up podcast, which I super appreciated. Uh, uh, so there, that's the Computing Up homepage. In fact, we have another, we're due out to have another one, uh, uh, well, yesterday, but it's probably going to come out today or tomorrow, depending on when I get some sleep. So uh, uh, that is it. Uh, um, my goals for next time is to, let, let, let's, let's, Welcome our new nerds, uh, do it or die. Uh, uh, and then to try to take the generalized distributed ring oscillator, the Ringo idea that I just took a brief little look at, uh, uh, and take it up to, uh, to user space so that we can at least see it working. I'd like to build Lotus 3 uh, uh, on the grid. And once again, always remind myself, have some fun. You do too. Uh, uh, thanks so much for coming. I hope to see you next time.